If game publishers are excited about NFTs, we probably shouldn't be. And this is talking about, it's hard to know what's more ob uh, obnoxious about Polium 1. The name, the fact it's a multi-chain gaming NFT console or its creator's patronizing response to player feedback. Uh, on July 2nd, the same day, The Guardian ran a piece saying NFT sales hit a 12-month low after a cryptocurrency crash. It was unveiled as a new Web3 gaming console coming out in 2024. Although it couldn't share a pro prototype or announce any titles coming to the new system, its social media channels promise exclusive games, in insist the team has experience in hardware and software, and says rather um, ominous that the founders will not stop it also said that whilst there is currently no cd drive maybe one day uh, it will partner up with netflix if they want to build a blockchain version of their app balls in your court netflix huh is this right is this thing gonna have a cd drive uh, no cd drive but maybe one day huh? i don't get it rather than spend time getting us on side the social media team, if there is one, and I'm not convinced, has been busy defending its logo. It looks so suspiciously familiar to the GameCube's one that two days later it was changed. <laughs> and more recently, th uh, threatening to ban members of its own Discord. If you're blissfully ignorant about NFTs, uh, I pray you stay that way. But for the uninitiated, NFTs, non-fungible tokens are unique digital assets that can sell for pennies or thousands of pounds in some instances, perhaps most notably in music and the arts. They're seen as a way of letting fans own digital assets to support, say, their favorite artists. A more cynical view, particularly in the gaming world, is that they're in insidious and predatory which is saying something uh, given the industry is a wash with microtransactions that are already pretty exploitative, exploitative, exploitative. But even sidestepping the uh, predatory argument, a blockchain requires huge amounts of energy, particularly when mining cryptocurrencies. Some will say they are a carbon neutral or even carbon negative, often by planting trees to offset the environmental impact. But as those needs to uh, need to grow over several years before they are able to offset the damage in any meaningful way, uh, the tractors remain unconvinced. Sigh. We at AgroCrab condemn Team 17's decision to produce and engage with NFTs. Angry, what's an angry crap? And if you need a sign that there's nothing good about NFTs for gamers, just look at how the world's biggest publishers are salvaging or oh, salivating at the chance of shoehorning them into established games and franchises. Sega, Square Enix, Ubisoft, Konami, EA, Team 17, each of those publishers have either already launched NFTs or have said they think they, they are the future. Several have had to U-turn or backtrack plans after fans and in some instances staff hit back. Not all of them have though, not by a long shot. The trouble with NFTs and Napoleon particularly is the, tri uh, the thick layer of arrogant condescendence that sits over everything. Any negativity must be because we don't understand it. Any backlash is because we're thick, uh, not because we think uh, owning a digital facsimile of something is stupid <laughs> instead of trying to win us over polym is doubling down as is painfully apparent in its follow uh, in its follow-up statement we have been receiving uh, fud fear under uncertain uh, uncertainty and doubt and criticism regarding our ability to execute its follow-up statement kicks off assuming our collective angst is about their ability to execute rather than the idea of a uh, not so good nft console itself to clarify it's four of us that are building the functional prototype for the console and controller i lost interest already how, how long is it uh what's up with the google stadia uh, i skipped a bunch of it uh i'm sorry did you say four is that supposed to make us better about uh, feel better about the project 
its defense of a, the quick hardware development cycle is not the win it thinks it is either. It takes console giants five plus years because they are console giants. It says they have reputation and must get approval from multiple departments and, they, and key investors through the hardware development process. Also, they need exclusive games, which takes more time. So you're saying you don't care about rep reputation, you don't have key investors, and you don't have exclusive games. K, okay, gotcha. Uh, I don't like the way he, uh, he's talking. Da, da, da. Yeah, but let's be clear. Podium, I skipped a bunch of stuff. Let's be clear. Podium 1 is a console we haven't seen running games. It hasn't confirmed for an an announced price releasing at an unspecified time via via virtual currency renowned for scams and theft and while we all know a fool and their money are soon parted about google stadia my friend even this fool won't be shelling out i mean all of that just to uh, do a little cheap shot at google stadia I won't be shelling out for this one it's so silly, man. See that before even before he even got to the Google Stadia, I was thinking he sounds like one of those guys that uh, just has to. He's he's criticizing these guys, which I, I don't like the idea of it either. But uh, he's criticizing these guys for sounding condescending and cocky, and that's exactly how he sounds while he's uh, explaining it. I think this person doesn't understand basic economics the the person uh you know writing the article uh obviously it was a clickbaity type of uh uh article it got me i read it it make you know it's one of those twenty dollar articles so even if i if an idea is terrible people are still gonna put it out in, into the world to see what their response is you know what i mean so if somebody announced this without a prototype, without any kind of, you know, uh, anything to back it up, it was most likely to see what the reaction of people were, just for the same reason that when they released the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog and everybody just went crazy <laughs> over how bad it looked and they actually had to redo the whole character and I get, I'm assuming re-render the whole movie, I don't know, but... Uh, so a lot of companies do this, uh, the same reason that everybody kind of knew about Project X, which I think became uh, Stadia, or oh, Project Stream. Yeah, Project X was uh, xCloud, and then Project Stream was Google Stadia. So all these leaks, all these little tidbits of information, uh, when, uh, when, it hits, uh, when it hits big... To me, I feel like it's intentional. Some stuff is obviously just happens, you know, uh, mistakes or whatever. But I think some of this stuff is intentional. You know what I mean? Uh, because they're trying to get a reaction. They're trying to get feedback for the for the things. So, in fact, Ryan Reynolds did the exact same thing with Deadpool. He felt the movie needed to get uh, made wherever we had the the you know the rights to it. Didn't want to make it, so he released a little bit of a, a little a clip. You know, uh, somebody released a clip, and next thing you know, it's in full production. You know what I mean? Uh, 